Well, thanks very much, Mary, and thanks to my cousin Ahmed for inviting me to come along and speak today. Uh, and thank you all for coming along and giving up your lunch hour uh, to hear us speak to you about um, diversity in Australian universities. I'll be supporting the view expressed by the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Melbourne, Professor Glyn Davis, in his 2017 book, The Australian Idea of a University, that there are benefits to Australian society in a university sector which is diverse, and I'll be applying that idea to law schools in particular. I want to talk about the risks where one worldview, particularly on moral questions, or what ought to be recognised as moral questions, on which rational persons may disagree on rational grounds, dominates the academy and the state. And to explain why a Catholic law school in particular, because it is Catholic, must be noticeably different to other law schools. As is my habit, I hope this audience will not mind me starting and ending my talk today with some words of scripture. And these words you can see on the PowerPoint come from Isaiah 49.6. I shall make you a light to the nations so that my salvation may reach the remotest parts of the earth. Unlike the university sector in the United Kingdom and the United States of America, universities were not originally established in Australia by religious organisations and they did not have religious tests for admission to study. We don't have religious tests for admission to study at Notre Dame in case you're wondering. In Australia until recent times, no universities were affiliated with any religious denomination. This does not mean, however, that from their, from their foundation, Australian universities were actually in conflict with religion. The absence of a particular religious affiliation in the foundations of Australian universities was actually a means of accommodating the various religious traditions of the population, rather than evidence of any antipathy to religious belief. And that's clear from the fact that from the beginning, Australian universities allowed for religiously affiliated residential colleges Whilst not necessarily evident in their foundation, the absence of a religious driver or tether has over, over time had a very significant influence on the outlooks and approaches of Australians, Australia's public universities. It has at least contributed to what Davis refers to as a singular lack of diversity in Australian public universities today. Speaking of Australia's first public university, one we've just been hearing about, the University of Sydney, <laughs> In observations which might similarly be made about Australia's other public and non-religious non universities, Davis has observed as follows, this is a quote from him, in time, speaking of the University of Sydney, the absence of religion shaped acceptable language about the purpose of the new institution. This would be a utilitarian institution befitting a pragmatic society. It was devoid of a chapel, there's at least one chapel there now, its workaday discourse was not mantled in appeals to God. There was no evocation of campus life as resonant with moral purpose. Likewise missing were American campus tropes about university forming moral character and instilling the virtues necessary for, for democracy. In its origin, the Australian university was determinedly prosaic. The first Catholic university in Australia was not established until 1989. In that year, the University of Notre Dame, Australia, I'll call it Notre Dame, was created by an act of the West Australian Parliament. Interestingly, that act says, amongst other things, that the university is to provide a university education in the context of Catholic faith and values. So that's an obligation that's imposed on us by the West Australian, or not imposed, but that's, a, that's an obligation which is found in the legislation which created the <coughs> university. The initial campus in Fremantle was supple supplemented by a campus in Broome that Mary mentioned earlier in 1994, and our campus in Sydney in 2006. Notre Dame is a private university with about 14,000 students across the country. We have about 7,000 students studying with us in our Fremantle campus and about the same number already in our Sydney campus. We have two law schools, one in Fremantle and one in Sydney. The Australian Catholic University, I'll refer to that as ACU, opened on the 1st of January 1991. As I understand it, ACU has one law school, but it has campuses in Sydney and in Melbourne. The creation of Australia's Catholic universities coincided with St. Pope John Paul II's Apostolic Const Constitution on Catholic Universities, Ex Corde Ecclesia, in 1990. Church documents take their name from the first few words of the document. So Ex Corde Ecclesia means in the heart of the church. 
It's a very rich document, and it's a document which is supposed to govern what Catholic universities do and the approach that they take. By describing Catholic universities as being in the heart of the church, St. Pope John Paul II made quite clear how important those institutions are to the church. Excorde Ecclesia calls on Catholic universities and their staff to integrate the Catholic faith and reason into everything that takes place. The Catholic context should, according to Excorde Ecclesia, be vitally present and operative in all learning, in all teaching, in all research that occurs, because it says Catholic ideals, attitudes and principles must penetrate and inform university activities. Catholic academics working in a Catholic university are expressly called in that document to be faithful to, their, to the Catholic Church's tradition uh, and to be faithful to the Catholic worldview in their research and their teaching. So Catholic universities, at least if they abide by the demands of ex corde ecclesia, and that's not universally the case, I can tell you, um, but if they do, they are clearly different to other universities and clearly different to other Australian universities. Australia's public universities, by contrast, are very large institutions. They range in size from the 70,000 students at Monash to the 10,350 students at Charles Darwin, which is Australia's smallest public university. Davis describes Australia's public universities as, that's a quote from him, large, highly regulated, largely non-residential institutions offering standard degrees linking research with teaching, stressing familiar pathways to professional standing. In his view, they are fundamentally similar. Diversity is an important characteristic of a multicultural, pluralist and multi-faith society like Australia. It is valued in workplaces and in professions alike. It enables a society, workplace and profession not only to respect the motivations and characteristics of individuals and groups within society, but also to learn from them. Different ways of thinking contribute more than the richness of diversity to society. They assist societies to learn and to develop and to accommodate difference rather than becoming monochromatic and dictatorial. Seeking the truth by gaining knowledge and testing propositions from a range of perspectives surely must be the objective of all universities and law schools in particular. For diversity to exist in educational institutions, each must have its own clear identity. If they don't, then they're not going to be different. Some students do not want to study at a large comprehensive metropolitan public university. As Davis has observed, some students want vocationally oriented courses, more flexible delivery, access to faith-based qualifications, rather than the liberal education promoted by public institutions, and they look for private offerings. Davis decries what he sees as a lack of diversity in contemporary public universities in Australia. But what I want to argue today, and I'm sure Tanya will be arguing that Newcastle University is different in many respects, but what I want to argue today is that as there are two Catholic universities with three Catholic law schools in Australia, at least if those institutions are really Catholic, there is already more diversity in the contemporary Australian university landscape than Davis allows. So Paley has argued that it seems to me that there is really no good reason for the existence of a Catholic law school as such if it is only going to be a carbon copy of the nearest secular law school. I agree. And Sargent has suggested that a Catholic law school should be clearly and unapologetically Catholic it should facilitate discussion about religion and the law. It must teach law in an ethical context and assist students not just to recognise ethical dilemmas, but also to resolve them in a principled way. And he argues it must also provide legal education and pro bono services to serve the poor, and it must enrol a critical mass of Catholics. Whilst his views as the centrality of service to the poor are well made, his view that this must be demonstrated by each Catholic law school having its own pro bono clinical legal service, I think is, up, is something that can be challenged. Because whether this is the most appropriate avenue for any, specific Catholic, for any specific Catholic law school to serve the poor will depend on the extent to which such services are provided already by others, the extent to which there are opportunities for students to obtain such placements 
and the resources which would be required by any given school to establish its own such venture. Alternatives to Sargent's proposal may include, for example, as we do, encouraging student volunteering, engaging in other social justice initiatives and fundraising for the poor. Sargent argues that a Catholic law school should be animated by a profound respect for the dignity of each individual, which in his view necessitates, first, considering the legal issues that arise due to poverty, inequality and discrimination in a principled way, and second, educating all students about the error of considering material wealth, personal ambition and perfection of legal skills as the prime motivations for legal practice without regard to, the impact, to their impact on others, the, conse the consequences, justice or truth. In a contemporary Australian context, a Catholic law school ought to be willing to engage with issues of relevance to Catholic faith and particularly those in which the Catholic worldview is under challenge. These include areas which can be very contentious, such as religious freedom, freedom of conscience, marriage, religious confession privilege, life issues such as euthanasia and abortion, and the recently enacted exclusion zone legislation, uh, which is in New South Wales and in many other states and territories of Australia today, which prevents a wide range of behaviours, including prayer, occurring within the vicinity of abortion clinics. A Catholic law school ought to also discuss natural law and the actual and ideal relationship between law and morality and consider appropriate opportunities for service to the poor and of promoting them to students. In my view, Catholic law schools have a critical role to play in contemporary Australian society. And since I'm the acting dean of the School of Business in Notre Dame at the moment, I'll also add uh, Catholic business schools to that proposition. They have a key role in maintaining the diversity of Australian society and ensuring that law students and lawyers continue to search for the truth and for the good. This is so even where this may cause them to challenge prevailing moral trends. A Catholic law school can help to provide intellectual rigor and careful critical analysis which are key requirements for sound decision making, both at an individual and state level. Its unique contribution is in continuing to bring the light of centuries of Catholic intellectual tradition to the table of debate and of discussion. Thanks very much.